Hey, welcome to the last Practical Liberty episode of 2022, and it's a really good one. <laughs> this is my interview with Corey Tusek, the founder and CEO of Movies Plus. Just a, a couple little housekeeping points before we get into it. In the first 60 seconds or so, I said accidentally that FDR blackmailed journalists. What I meant to say there was blacklisted. <laughs> FDR had journalists censored, fired, and then made it impossible for them to, to get hired again. He didn't actually blackmail them, although I wouldn't put it past him. Also, towards the end of the conversation, I mentioned that I was planning to release this episode a couple days before Christmas. Obviously, that didn't happen. Just life and Christmas stuff got in the way. But I still think Movies Plus could make a great belated Christmas present or just a cool gift that supports free speech. Um, and it has plenty of entertaining content when you, you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. Anyway, I hope everyone had a great Christmas and that you're relaxing and catching up on all the podcasts you missed over the holidays as we move towards the new year. And now, here is my interview with Corey Tusek. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Practical Liberty. My name's Henry Bingaman. Uh, today's an exciting episode for me because obviously as a podcaster and writer, I'm all for free speech. And, you know, if there was one law that the government could just overthrow if they had the option, and by the government, I mean the permanent bureaucratic state, it would probably be the First Amendment. The First Amendment has been under attack basically since the founding of the country. Um, John Adams had the Sedition Act where he was throwing anyone in jail who defamed the government. Lincoln uh, closed down newspapers through publishers in jail during the Civil War. Woodrow Wilson jailed his political opponents and threw anybody who opposed the uh, U.S. entry into World War I into jail. FDR had such tight control over the media that literally blackmailed journalists that had even mild criticism of him. Um, and remember, his policies were praised by Mussolini. So this has been an ongoing battle for all of American history. Every generation, the government comes up with a new scheme to kind of suppress free speech. And so every generation, there's a new crop of Americans that pop up to kind of fight back. And uh, I'm very proud to have Corey Tusek on today. He's the founder and CEO of My Movies Plus, or Movies Plus, um, which is a free speech maximalist movie platform. Uh, Corey, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, it's also you know nice to, to meet another fellow Pitt alum. Absolutely. <laughs> I was class of uh, 07. When when drew you out? 09. 09. Right. So Although we overlapped was, a little bit. Yeah. And I, I would have, I, uh, I did a fifth year uh, spe uh, specifically to play hockey longer. Um, oh, nice. So, uh, so yeah, I, I basically did like a red shirt and, uh, and played. Uh, so I, my fifth year was 09. So I would have actually graduated in 08. Um, but it was like, it was funny. The option came up like, hey, you can play longer and also delay going into the real world and also <laughs> you only have to take 12 credits a semester what do you think and i was like sign me up like it sounds great <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh pit was a lot of fun i i had a great time those days i'm not sure how valuable the education turned out to be but uh i'm grateful for my time there anyway none of none of the college ed education is valuable so you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then, it's, that's gonna it's, come back to bite me when my kids hear this in the future <laughs> it's getting worse and worse so you could say it was better in my day yeah yeah exactly so can you kind of run through what Movies Plus is, um, just how you founded it, what what the purpose was of it? Yeah, so um, I found I uh, I started off right after Pitt actually uh, graduated, and there was a movie called Warrior with uh, Joel Edgerton, Tom Hardy about uh, MMA fighting that was uh, filming at the Peterson Event Center actually, which is uh, where we had graduation, and like right after graduation, they were tearing it down and and putting you know the the movie the octagon in there and um and i i graduated with a film degree so you know i obviously was like well this is my one shot and i went for that got into production i was on like all the big movies you know bouncing around from you know the 200 million dollar projects as like a low level you know production assistant um just getting you know like shit on by everybody and uh <laughs> all that fun stuff uh, i got kind of fed up with that and went into distribution and I was selling movies. Um, but I knew right whenever this is like eight years ago, nine years ago, I, I was like the streaming future is the future. This every, like the writings on the wall. Cause like all these sales agents would go to these markets and sell movies, individual territories. They'd take a movie, be like, Hey, you know, Israel, you buy it for 20 grand, you buy it for this, you know, and like slice up the rights and everything was moving global. And so I knew, that was the future eventually. So in my mind, I eventually wanted to get into the streaming world and I had tons of big ideas, but never really had the thing that was going to push me over the edge to actually do it. Um, and then, uh, and then in 2020, um, I got in touch with, uh, Amanda Milius, the director of the plot against the president, um, which is about the Russia gate hoax. And, um, I mean, I'm not like a Trump supporter, but 
I'm a freedom of speech supporter. And I was like, well, this is going to get censored. And that's what she was afraid of. And so she said, is there any platform that won't take it down? And I said, I could put it on Movies Plus. And I had to spin the website up as quick as possible. I had like two weeks to do it. Um, <laughs> got everything in line in place. And then, um, and then yeah, we, we launched uh and it it did really well uh and you know brought a lot of people people to the platform but then from there it was a lot of work it was like okay now we had to like build out the apps we had to build out the catalog everything else because i mean when plot against the president was on there i think i had like 20 other movies for people to watch you know so it was like they obviously were coming for one thing and i wanted to provide her the opportunity for one for a place that was going to be secure and take care of it so um you know freedom of speech is like kind of at the core of everything I've like believed in. Cause if you take that away, you take away, you take away their human, their, their basic human right, you know, to life and to have a voice like, you know, and it's not my right to take either of those things away from someone. So, um, so I wanted to stick up for that. Cause I obviously COVID showed us what, you know, was happening with censorship and, you know, whatever you think about the virus, I don't care, but like, I, I hate the fact that people can't share their opinions on it. Um, and and then it was just getting out of control and then obviously trump gets suspended from twitter and i'm like oh my god this technocratic like bullcrap is this is gonna really come down hard on us um and we yeah so we then ended up getting into our first originals um over the summer uh we uh, we did a release an exclusive uh it was uh called the most canceled man in america another person that i don't you know necessarily support but i support their choice to have a, their ability to have a voice and that's nick fuentes um and uh you know it's just about how the government took his money and and uh you know put him on a no-fly list because he was at january 6th and then uh now we have q sent me up on the platform which is uh it's about jacob chansley the q shaman the guy with the buffalo horns that uh, was at the capitol uh it's the only interview footage with him we have he's you know because he's currently in prison um and uh and so we have a part one of the series is out. We have part two and three coming up here shortly. Uh, and yeah, we, that's, that's, uh, the gist of where we, how we got to where we are now. And it's just crazy because we ended up butting into like, I thought that this censorship fight was going to be hard. I didn't think it was gonna be this hard, you know, it's, (laughs) it's gotten really out of hand. And so, so it's been a wild ride. Um, and you know, and it's also kind of pushed me into being a libertarian. Um, I think I always was, before 2020 i would tell people that my political views were ron swanson like (laughs) from parks and rec if anybody knows that i was like that's that's who i identify with politically um and uh but but now i think i found my home (laughs) it seems yeah i was i was in the college libertarians back in Pitt, but then it just i don't know for the 2008 and through whatever years it just didn't seem that important like sure the government was seemed out of control but they weren't really interfering with my life it, that directly. So I just mm-hmm. kind of I was more apolitical than than I should have been knowing what I know about libertarian philosophy. And then 2020 really kicked me back into the libertarian mode in pretty high gear. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was talking about this uh, on last week's podcast with CJ Kilmer, the Dangerous History podcaster. The most powerful thing the government has is the narrative. It's control of the narrative. Um, you know, that's more important than all the guns they have, because there's not enough guns to control every single American if they disagree with them. So controlling the narrative, you know, in CJ's case, we're talking about <laughs> historical facts that just kind of get memory hold, but they're memory holding facts in real time. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't I don't think I'd like Nick Fuentes if I met him in person. I don't agree with almost anything he says, but the more you shut those people down, the more people think there's something that it's the Streisand effect, right? There's yep. something there to see. So you're bringing more people into them, ironically, by trying to shut them up. You're like legitimizing their opinion, you know, especially because their opinion is, oh, the government's trying to shut down what I'm saying because it's the truth. And then if exactly. they try to shut it down, you're like, oh, maybe it is the Jews. And of course, it's ridiculous to say yeah. that. But yeah. but you're bringing a lot of you know, people don't read deeply. They don't know history. They don't know <laughs> current events, really. So. If they see somebody like that and what they're predicting comes true, they're going to believe their other predictions, too. So, I mean, freedom of speech is so important because you have to have all those ideas out there so people can actually judge what's real. If if there was just if Nick Fuentes was allowed to speak, nobody would listen to him because he'd just sound like a, a ranting madman. But the fact that they're doing this to him raises his profile to such a degree that Kanye West is now hiring him to help him run for president. And yeah, yeah things exactly. get crazy there. Yeah, so I want to. I want to ask you I want to ask you about your your business plan in some sense, because 
All right. So we have the most censorship happy government that we've had in years, right? The FBI is coming in and trying to control things. Uh, there's already established multi-billion dollar streaming platforms that are going to hate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure advertising is a huge challenge because the, the duopoly of you know Google and Facebook is where most advertising dollars go and they don't like your freedom of speech message. So how did you decide to actually start a movie business? Like what is the business? What do you see as your unique advantage that you're going to be able to compete with those big guys? Um, because they're, the main reason and the unique, you know, basically our unique selling proposition is that we are, there's a huge appetite for the content that's being censored. Um, you know, people are really fed up with it and they want to see something different than, you know, it's getting really boring. Like you go to all the streaming apps and it's the same thing, the same cut and dry, you know, like, hey, it all comes from a liberal bend, you know, like no matter what it is, it has like that liberal flavor to it. And I don't care if there's things with liberal flavor to it. It's just so annoying that it's all from one side. And and there's a large segment of the population that is not getting serviced in this industry. So I was like, well, there's a huge market opportunity to, you know, basically grab that and and take it by the take the bull by the horns and, and run with it. Um, but I knew full well that the challenge the challenges were going to come with it. And I mean, like I am, you know, I am a religious person. So like I'd be completely honest with you. I I don't even know if I've really shared this with many people, but like I didn't um, I really didn't want to take on the plot against the president. Because I liked living in the background. I liked not having the attention. I liked not being on podcasts. I mean, I, you know, I'm okay with it. Like it's, you know, I've chosen this life at this point. Um, but I, I liked, you know, I had a good life. I was living in the, in the shadows. I would sell movies to platforms and countries and, you know, just making an honest living and doing all right, taking the kids to Disney. Nobody knew, you know, nothing like I wasn't out in the public. It was great. Um, so I knew this was going to be a fight and like, like we literally, me and my wife, like prayed about it. Um, and like, I was like, I feel like I'm, I felt like I was being called to do it. And I thought I was like, this, this is weird. Cause it was right at the election. I was like, so like, I feel like there's a calling is it like God wants like Trump to win. Like, I think that's weird. Cause I don't think he cares about Trump, you know, like, but <laughs> you know, something is going on here. And I, it's one of those classic things with like anything in life, whenever you're trying to like follow your calling, you don't really see the, the forest, you know, to, for the trees, you see, you are focused on the one thing and think that that's it. But then it's become this bigger thing now where like, if we didn't exist, a ton of the content that I already mentioned wouldn't be getting platformed um, and getting pushed around. So, so it was, you know, a, a mindset of like, Hey, we got to grow, you know, with a mindset of like, we got to get to cash flow positive. You know, we don't want to take on debt. We don't want to, you know, take on, uh, I mean, I'd prefer to not take on investing because I don't want to give up equity. Um, and so we've just been, you know, I keep saying we're slow and steady wins the race, but like, you know, at any at, at random moments, we have that like hockey stick, you know, that, that shoves us up to the next level um, and growth. And so, you know, it, yeah, but then the advertising has been difficult. Like we, the, you know, you talk about how the tech, the freedom of speech is being censored so uniformly across, um, across the social media and everything. The thing that gave me the like real creeps was that, um, our, like so Facebook deleted our page because I was I ran advertisements about the Q sent me. I mean, it's literally it's like the Tiger King of January 6th. And like the guy's in prison. The documentary does not mention anything like it doesn't espouse an opinion. It's just, hey, this is this guy that everyone knows who that is if they see his picture. And isn't this story interesting? And so, you know, we were going to have this huge growth. Um because we were going to advertise it and people, it was going to be an easy click, boom. You know, we know we knew what the growth was there. Um, so I put the ads out and we actually even waited till the Friday after uh, election day so that we wouldn't get flagged as trying to influence the election. <laughs> and, um, and I had the ads running and the weirdest thing was that within, I mean, like within minutes in unison across Twitter, YouTube, and you uh, do YouTube slash Google and Facebook. Everything got banned. It's as if there is an as if there is a big, you know, you un, like unilateral decision maker behind all of that. It was just the weirdest thing. And it like that really creeped me out. Um, so, you know, they they shut down everything. Facebook 
uh, Twitter right now, uh, like our, our, our Twitter account exists in some form. <laughs> We're not allowed to run ads about certain things that they get flagged, you know, but we put out like our Christmas movie marathon and people it, that ads are allowed to run. So, um, YouTube, uh, we're getting some of the stuff back. Um, but, uh, but that's still been a challenge, but Facebook just flat out, the page is gone, gone forever. There's no recourse. There's nothing I can do to get it back. There's nothing I can do to run ads. So yeah, we're in this like incredibly frustrating spot now where like I have this intellectual property that is massive and, um, it's going to draw tons of eyeballs, but we, can't get the eyeballs to look at it because the powers that be don't want that. So, so then this is like the moment now I'm like, Oh, this is, this is the, the, the powers that we're up against. Like, this is really, you know, like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm on a list, you know, like <laughs> me personally, like this, this is, this is creepy. Um, and all I do want to do is make movies. Like that's, that's a funny thing. I'm, I really at the core just want to be a movie maker, but um, you know, I guess they want to keep a, you know, try, it's like, like you said, you try to keep stomping out the voices and you're just going to, it's going to come back louder. You know, like they censor us. I'm not going to get quiet. I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, I guess <laughs> I'll just go and, you know, cry in the corner. Like, no, F that. I'm coming harder now. So I think one of the most frustrating things about this, the whole censorship regime is that the, the gaslighting behind it is that it, you're supposed to think that these were all independent decisions made by these advertising companies for the protection of their customers or whatever. But it has to be a single. I mean, I would probably suspect the FBI at this point because I, I watched the first episode of Q sent me and the FBI doesn't they don't come off looking horrible. But Jacob comes off looking like misguided, but fairly like, I don't know, a, a nice but naive person in some ways. Like he had no idea what he was in for. Like he no. didn't understand the powers he was running up against. Um, so I don't think the government, because they've painted him as the main villain, right? This yeah. was the oh, violent yeah. insurrection. They were trying to kill Mike Pence or whatever. So they can't let him look like a human. He has to look like that barbarian sitting on the throne, right? It's it's very yeah. <laughs> almost Germanic imagery that they're, they're bringing up of this barbarian invading the Capitol, which is how they really think of the Trump supporters. But it has yeah, to be. exactly. It has to be a centralized source and fighting that centralized source, which is which has deniability, right? They're never showing us that they're doing this. Yeah. The FBI or CIA or whoever is doing this isn't saying like this is us, but it has to be the case that there's a centralized power behind this. Yeah. Why would it all happen within minutes? You know, it, uh, yeah, it, it's impossible. So what what is the plan for getting the word out? I mean, podcasts like this are, you know, I have a, a thousand or so listeners per episode. That's that's not going to blow you to the moon here. But uh, what what is well, your plan? Um, I mean, we do like, honestly, I've been saying we've had such support with the libertarian community and, and it kind of works because I've been like getting pushed into this libertarian world. And, you know, so ever since I was on, um, Tom Woods, like I've had so many people reach out and we saw a lot of people sign up just because of that. Um, so, you know, the, the key is like, for our growth is honestly, it's just going to be through word of mouth um, and with, you know, so like with uh, social media accounts, helping spread the word with that, that gets into something interesting because like, you know, a lot of voices on the right that you would think would be like, Hey, you know, freedom of speech, we're going to back this have like cooled their jets. Um, I'm talking like the biggest news show in the world. And you, you're like, and they, they back off. Cause like, Oh, January 6th is kind of like too hot of a topic to talk about, you know? And it's like, really? Like, okay. So, you know, you're showing your true colors, I guess. Um, and so it's just, you know, we got to get more, I guess, influence. We're working with different influencers. We're getting more people. But uh, really, you know, the only way that it grows is by having the next piece of content that is going to really, you know, like make people's eyes go wide, um, which we have. Uh, and, <laughs> You know, it's uh, like as my wife said, she was like, well, that's going to bring some heat. Um, and uh, and so, uh, you know, it's just you got to keep it's all about the content. Really, that's the way the key to growth is content. Um, and then you do have to get the word out there as much as you can. So, you know, we're working as much as we can, you know, wherever we can throw ads, we'll throw ads up um, because that helps, uh, you know, but. You know, we don't also have a, ton, like a huge advertising budget where I can just, you know, find one part and, and just blow the doors off with it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we got to get we got to just keep getting the word out there and like people that are listening, you know, and like we talk about 
how really this is like a vote for free speech um, because we have some you know content on our platform that you can't get anywhere else. We have more coming to us and they'll be released in the next two months that is, you can't get anywhere else that you're going to love. Um, but you know, you're also supporting, there's other content for you to watch. We have thousands of titles um, and it's all commercial free if you're a subscriber, but it's really what we're asking is for you to help us get to the next level where we can, you know, keep going. Cause there's a lot of cost on the back end too, of helping to protect against, you know, being shut down. So, um, so yeah, so that's the, the steps for growth really is that like, you know, word of mouth. So we need the social media, you know, help from influencers and stuff. And we're working on that. Um, but also just individuals, you know, if you're, you know, if you're listening to this, if you're a movies plus subscriber, you know, tell your friends and family about it and, you know, let them know what's going on here and let them know because we can't get out there and tell everybody, you know, that's the most frustrating part. It feels like I have a muzzle on and, you know, so it's like, I just want to get out there. I mean, it's so bad that like my dad didn't even know that like, he, he goes, Oh, how's business going? And I was like, well, you know, I went and started going through everything. I said, you know, and they banned our Facebook page. And he's like, really? I was like, yeah, dad. They didn't. He's like, that's like a violation of your First Amendment right. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I've yeah. been telling you this, you know, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not joking around, you know, this isn't a joke. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, the, the social media platforms just gets interesting, the, the First Amendment distinction, because, you know, I, it bothers me when the libertarians say, well, they're a private company, they can do whatever they want, as if that's the point. Like, mm -hmm. uh, technically, you're right, but they're also controlling the public square. And you know, they've set up enough regulations that it keeps new startup <laughs> like private companies out. Like, look what happened to Parler. Um, yeah. You know, they they didn't like what was happening on Parler. And so all the big tech colluded to shut them down. This is and we know now the FBI is involved. So it's, it's not just a free speech issue. I mean, it's not just a private company issue. It, it actually is a free speech issue when the government gets involved. Actually, speaking of Parler, you know, Amazon took their their web servers down. So mm -hmm. what's What's your technological solution, I guess? Do you have any technology in place to not get canceled in the same way? Like you have this that server problem or have you set up something that's going to kind of skirt around that? Um, so we're working on that. Um, I mean, we have a good like server partner and they've been they've been great and very helpful um, and, you know, supportive. So so I really don't have anything. But this also this solution we're working on, it's like you just have to have your fail safes in place. Um, so I'm. I'm a, I'm a Bitcoiner. Um, so if you're, you know, somebody that's into, doesn't want to hear me talk about Bitcoin, just relax. I'm not going to get all, you know, preachy on you and be like, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Oh, we um, might later. <laughs> yeah. But the, but uh, I, I, and this isn't like me, like inventing something. It was, but uh, I had this idea where basically the lightning network was something on Bitcoin that solves a lot of the problems that people would say, Oh, you need to do Ethereum because it's faster, blah, blah, blah. And lightning solves that. So I'm like, okay. And I start looking into it. And I had originally, this is what turned me from a, uh, somebody like a Bitcoiner that like, you know, dabbled in shit coins to, um, to somebody that was a Bitcoin only. And I was developing with movies plus, like at the very beginning, I was developing a system where there'd be like a token involved to help, you know, the decentralized server, a decentralized server farm exists and people would earn the token by, you know, hosting the files, blah, blah, blah. Um, and whenever I came down to it, I was like, wait a minute, this could be done on top of Bitcoin as like a layer two or three and it would be more secure. Why would I make a token? And I realized then that the only reason you make a token is so that you can dump it on retail and make a fortune off of them. So, I was like, ah, okay. Like, and, and that kind of like made me realize like anything of value that any of the, the, you know, non Bitcoin crypto currencies have will be something that lives on top of Bitcoin in, you know, a layer two or three in the future. So it's like, it's kind of like a nice like sandbox, I guess. It sucks that it hurt, hurts people's financial, you know, it takes their money and all that kind of stuff. And there's all the fraud going on in the crypto world right now that we see. But um, but yeah, so like I'm not here to like preach like, oh, Bitcoin only. But that's that's whenever it really finally all made sense to me. And um, and so then this decentralized server farm, I started building this idea because um, there's people that run the Bitcoin nodes um, everywhere. And it's basically a hard drive. And there's this all this hard drive space that you could use. 
And I was like, well, what if you what if you created a system where, you know, it's cryptographically protected so nobody can pirate it. And all of a sudden, one day it pops up on your node and says, hey, do you want to download and host Movies Plus as files? And so we, you know, I, I laid this whole idea out, not knowing if it was technically possible. And I finally talked to developers in the Bitcoin world that, you know, work on lightning protocols and everything. And it was like the best phone call I ever had because he was like, yeah, it's totally possible. Like this is 100%. And he started going through everything. Yeah, like we can do it. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, there's even stuff like Keat.io that I'm like dabbling in right now just to like work my way through and understand. But essentially, the problem that it solves is all a server is, is the place that serves you the video file. So like when you're watching Netflix, the, it's the path of least resistance to your device. So whatever, whatever server can send you the file in the least resistance as possible, as, as few jumps as possible, that's the one that's going to send it. And they send it in data packs. So like, that's why like, you know, it's these like 15 second chunks mm -hmm. of, you know, movies that you, that you're, so when you're watching a movie, there's a 15 second chunk that you're watching. There's the next 15 seconds is downloaded and buffered and ready for you, ready to go. And the third one is, you know, buffering. And the fourth one is downloading. And it's just this constant cycle going through and going through. Um, and so you can see that whenever you fast forward and skip, like it kind of goes through those chunks. Um, and so it's not like you're downloading an entire movie. You're just streaming these little data packs. Um, so in theory, if my neighbor was running a server for Netflix, when I watched a Netflix show, it would just serve the files from their house to mine because it's a path of least resistance. Um, so, you know, it actually is an economical, it makes economical sense for people to do this so we you know started developing this idea and i want it to be open source because i i see the power in it for like censorship resistance because basically if all these nodes are running and they're serving the content all over the world you know they could come to if you're running say you're like rumble and you turn on to this system um and, you know, that's the idea is like movies plus will be the first and then like other ones will come on. Maybe Netflix will say, hey, let's make it available. And then like after, you know, a couple months, they go, wow, like, you know, 5% of our traffic went through there and it was seamless. And eventually they'll find out, oh, it's cheaper to pay people because that's the thing. If you're serving the data packs from your server, you do get, you know, paid minuscule amounts like, you know, pennies, but like still it's something. And um are you and getting paid, cost. paid in Satoshis if you're running a node? Is that kind of the... Yeah, yeah. The idea would be, you know, I mean, you know, if people aren't comfortable with holding Bitcoin, you know, just to have it converted directly into dollars. Sure. But, um, uh, you know, so you could choose it however, however you want to get it. But the, uh, but yeah, so it all go over uh, the Bitcoin network. And, um, you know, people, if you're like a Rumble or YouTube competitor and you're like, I don't like that video, take it down. Rumble would be like, I, I can't. Like... <laughs> You know, like I can't shut off our servers. Like they're anonymous, decentralized servers all over the world. I have no idea where they are. I can't control them. It's out there, right? You know, so that that's the idea, um, and that's like an incredibly uh, dangerous idea to the people that want to control uh, freedom of speech. And and so yeah, it, and I mean the fact that it was like actually possible that just blew me away. It was like a little over a year ago that I that came to that realization. Now for me as movies plus, I have to get the business to the point where I could even start, you know, dabbling in that infrastructure. Like it, it's great. If there's somebody I keep, that's why I'm looking at Keith.io. I'm like, maybe this is a solution that can just plug in. Um, and I'm all about just the idea getting out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so for us and also too, like, yeah, we're a freedom of speech platform, but like, you know, we're not, we're not YouTube. So like, it's not like anybody can just upload their content to us. Like it, it, we are a movie in, you know, like entertainment platform. So like, it has to be narratives, you know, like there has to be, you know, we're, we're looking into getting podcasts involved, you know, but like, that's another form of entertainment. Um, we just want to make sure that like, you know, there, there's certain information that's not getting censored, but it's something that eventually can be used by everybody. And, you know, I see the future in, you know, 30 years where like everything you watch is streamlined through this process and um, it will make the most reliable server network. You know, you won't have outages, 
Um, because instead of, you know, a couple servers going down or having trouble a couple places, it's like if my neighbor across the street, if they, if their power goes out, um, and the whole street's power is out, it's just going to go hop to the next neighborhood and start pulling the content from there. So, um, and also there's Moore's law, you know, with how fast technology grows, uh, you know, we're, we're at this position now where, I mean, in 10 years, it's totally doable, um, on a massive scale, it's just going to grow fast enough. So, you know, it's one of those things that's this huge idea. I love it. I get really excited about it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to change the world. And like, you know, every it's going to change the way that like everything's done and, you know, be the ultimate way to protect free speech. Um, but it's also like a little bit ways off. It takes, it's a lot of work and it, a lot of infrastructure. And that's why we need the business to grow. So it's this you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you understand, you know, you keep going back and forth between like the dream phase and the day to day phase, like, oh, the big picture dream versus like, OK, well, I got to make sure like we got to make, you know, we got to make uh, we got to make the money. We got to get money in now. We got to get our overhead taken care of. We got to go. Um, and, and then all along the way, you get censored by Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and, and you can't advertise and it you know, slows your growth significantly. And then that becomes incredibly frustrating and, uh, you know, causes you to, uh, you know, wake up early and run on your treadmill extra fast and, <laughs> you know, lift more weights to get all that anger out because, uh, you're you know pretty pissed off at the, uh, the system. So yeah, that's where, I, that's where I find myself now. Yeah. It sounds similar to what, uh, do you know, Jeremy Kaufman and what he's doing with library and, uh, Odyssey. Um, um, yeah, a little bit. I don't know the deep, like I'm not like super, like in the in the weeds with uh, yeah he it. so it's basically he's trying to get Odyssey totally decentralized, uh, but he did build his own token and then I think it was the SEC sued him for it and yep. he just lost that case. So doing it on top of Bitcoin, which I think they've already classified as a commodity, not a yep. uh, security. So you have actually it it is more stable just because there's some legal precedent there that allows you to do it on top of Bitcoin. That it's going to be much harder and much riskier to do it on one of the shit coins as most people call them. Yeah. And I mean, I, that's why I tell people, you know, like I have, you know, business partners that would get, you know, they would come to me and be like, Hey, like, what do you think about, uh, you know, these different like NFTs or, I mean, we had so many NFTs come to us and say like, <laughs> they wanted to do something with like, I could have taken a ton of money and personally been sitting in a better financial situation right now and like much more relaxed in my day to day life. Um, but it was morally, wrong um but also like i kept telling people i said i said these are securities the sec has been very clear about it and like i'm not like messing with that like i don't i don't want to get involved in that first of all and you know like so it, it's like one on morally i don't like shit coins and all that kind of stuff uh because they're just trying to take people's money hello ftx um but then uh you know you have on top of that there's just not the legal framework. Like it's not going to work out. So like I tried telling, you know, people like, look, you know, it like just telling you, you can do what you want, but there's a probably going to be class like classified as securities and it's going to become a real big issue um, in all of them. I mean, everything besides Bitcoin will be, you know, treated as a security like that. And, and there's nothing they can do about you. You can't do There's nothing they can do about Bitcoin. That's why that's the only thing that I'll get like really preachy about, like why people should support Bitcoin. I'm like, go ahead, like mess around. Like, you know, if you want my advice, I'll give it to you. But like, if you're going to invest in these things, whatever, like. But the reason we need to get behind Bitcoin is because they they can't, in theory, stop it. I mean, I guess they can't stop it. In theory, they could. It depends on the, the rate of the growth of layer one of Bitcoin and the speed with which we do it because if they could just slap a securities blanket on it they would have done that a long time ago like they completely understand so like the government's playing steps ahead on this bitcoin thing and they're trying to get ahead of where the bitcoiners are so so that's the biggest battle there is uh is because once they control i mean if they find a way to to kill off bitcoin then everything's gonna be a central bank digital currency Everything is going to be, you know, do you have enough social credits to okay. use your money? Um, you know, you look at what's happening in China. If your you know, passport's red on your phone, your bank account will be locked. Um, so, you know, that in that they can't do that on Bitcoin. What they can do on Bitcoin is trap layer, like second layers, third layers. You know, there's something on the Lightning Network and 
I have a like a friend in the Bitcoin space, Hoddle Magoo, shout out if he's listening. Um uh, but he, you know, he was like pointed out, he said there's this lightning labs that like is trying to develop all this stuff. And he's like, this might be like government controlled. And like that's how they'll catch. They're trying to throw nets down the, the road to catch it because they can't stop, you know, Bitcoin layer one. Um, all they can do is discourage and and try and trap as much of it in the future. So um so it, Bitcoin as a main layer needs to to keep growing as fast as possible so that it can outpace the government controls. Because there's one thing they do not want, and that is the ability for you to transact freely and openly. And in the fact that now, like, there's the realization that free speech is involved with Bitcoin, like, you know, because even they say, like, code is speech, you know, so, like, there's a free speech element to it. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm talking about like putting, and there's other people talking about it too, putting, you know, these different ideas on top of Bitcoin. And it's like, it's almost becoming this like house that protects all these other things. And believe me, the government sees that they know what's going on and, and they're going to do everything they can to, to stop it. Yeah. My great hope is that it's actually my white pill is that the government is incredibly corrupt. Anybody can kind of see that that's paying attention, but they're also incredibly incompetent and they're always yeah. infighting and they don't know how to get ahead of things. They like the CIA kind of does. There's some people that are there are competent people in the government, but as an organization, they're they're clueless. They, they have one blunt instrument, one like big power move that they always try. And if it fails, they just flail and they don't know what to do. So, yeah. I mean, you know, the future is bright as long as we don't give up on you know, the, the freedom of speech, the Bitcoin, the, you know, taking back control of the money and, you know, our own lives. I think we could beat these people. They're just not impressive at all. You know, it's the old saying of like, I always said in sports, I played hockey at Pitt, as I mentioned. So like, I would always tell, I would tell this to referees, I'd say that I, you know, got in altercations with, I'd say those that can't play coach and those that, that can't coach referee. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, for, but for like government, I'm like, those that can't, create on their own or like prosper on their own go into government work and um and yeah so it's like unfortunately that means that they're, if they can't grow and create on their own that means that they're like lack of competence so exactly i i think the same thing you're saying all the time i'm like well the good news is like because if there were really competent minds working on this um then it would be a lot of things would get snuffed out quicker but they're just you know there's so much infighting too. And it's just, it's as what Ron Swanson says, it's a over, it's a, it's a bloated pig that, you know, is, you know, sucking the American people dry and, you know, uh, waste taxpayer, do taxpayer dollars. So um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's not an efficient model for business. Um, it's anti-efficient. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite of efficiency. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's they're incompetent and they're just trying they're flailing you know and that's why i told people i'm like that's why i'm you know got as far away from the city as possible because i was like I, this is gonna get a little weird like this decade's yeah. gonna be pretty weird um so you know it's all about like you know making your making yourself the cost of tyranny like really expensive you know, like the further away you are from cities, the less reliant you are on utilities and other things that you can't control within your own domain. Um, the more, the less you're relying on that, the more expensive tyranny is, you know, because I'll tell you where I moved. It's like as if the pandemic never happened. It's, like, yeah, I had the same experience. Like when I was in Philadelphia, everything was shut down. There was nowhere to go. I moved out to the mountains and like, you can always tell who the tourists are because the ones wearing masks, nobody local cares at all. Yeah. It was like, it never happened. And you know, yeah. there were six people in the hospital at a time in my entire County because we're all spread out. So yeah, I yeah. mean, it's when you have rural areas are different than urban areas and I've lived in both. It's yep. rural areas are more, it's, you have to be more independent because you know, I've never seen a policeman like within a mile of my house. If I called the cops, they'd take 30 minutes to get here. So you do have, when you have to be self-reliant people, tend to move that way right there's no other choice yeah oh yeah i mean you know you're doing it right if you live somewhere where like in the middle of the night you hear a noise and you're not worried about an intruder but you're like oh you know this there's a 
raccoon trying to get the chickens, I have to go take my gun out and shoot it. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, that, that means you're living that it's very, you know, cause I mean, I, I had like my one business partner, he's like, ah, no, like no matter where you are, you're like completely effed, you know, you're effed. Like, uh, you know, the very few people survive, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. I think, I think we'd all kind of like just, you know, out here move in our own, at, at our own speed and kind of fortify maybe like a few like landowners together would like, you know, say, okay, we'll like, you know, set up a perimeter here and, you know, we've got our water, we've got our electric, you know, electricity, we got, uh, you know, we got what we need. Um, and, and we got, you know, food source. So we'll, you know, go out when we need to, but, uh, you know, we're good, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and that's, that's really what I wanted. Like, I, I didn't want my kids growing up in a world where they think they had to be afraid of things. And so like right off the bat with COVID, it was like me and my wife were like, look, we are not going to let our kids think that they have to be afraid of everything in life. And, um, and so, you know, at the, at the school that we were at, they were having to wear masks and everything. And it was funny. Then we came up to this, to where we moved and we went to like, go take a tour of the school with the guidance counselor. And we had our masks in our hands, just assuming that they were going to make us wear them. And like, nobody was wearing one. And we were like, and we looked at her, we we're like, do we need, and she was like, I mean, if you want to wear it, you can. And I was like, no, I don't, I want to wear it, you know? And, um, you know, it's just about properly teaching, you know, your kids what to be afraid of in life. You know, there's certain things you can't control. You can't, con it's, I feel really bad for the youth that are going to grow up so afraid of disease. Um, because like you, you can't control germs. You can control certain aspects of it. And the funny thing is pre pre COVID me and my wife were crazy about like the, like the flu, like we, it drove us nuts. How many like people were like, don't wash their hands, <laughs> you know? And like people would come over to our house and like leave their shoes on and just walk. They were like, Oh God, take your shoes off. Please. Like, please. You're just, you were just walking through everything. And like, <laughs> and, and now like, we're like, eh, like, I mean, I still, we, I still don't like it, but like, you know, it's just funny. You would have thought that we would have been the people who were like totally locked out, but, but no, we, we understand, you know, the freedoms and, and it's just, it's cool to see, um, you know, where we live, the kids, you know, living a life normal and, and it's, but it does make me sad when I think about like, there's parts of this world where the, it isn't, it isn't like that right now, parts of this country in America. That's insane. A lot of that reason is because people aren't allowed to hear the countervailing narratives that, oh, maybe this isn't as bad as you think. And maybe masks are more damaging to kids than we originally assumed, right? It, it actually comes back to the freedom of speech that people are brainwashed to think like you have to live in fear. That is the narrative that they're using to control us right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like in people, you know, like in the, in a, in theory, you can see where the, the you can see where they're coming from because it's not always a place of pure evil and malice, you know, like they're like, I got to get this under control. And the only way I can do it is making blanket statements instead of trusting that people are smart enough to think for themselves, you know? Um, so like, cause early on when nobody knew what it was, like we were like me and my wife were like, look, we gotta, we gotta pull back. Like, let's get in our house and stay here. Hopefully in five to seven days, we don't have any symptoms. We didn't get this thing that we don't know how it affects you yet. Um, and then we'll, we'll start from there. We'll see where it goes. And we did like, we didn't even tell the kids, like we just were like pretended like life was normal. You know, we just, we yeah. just didn't go anywhere for a handful of days, but they didn't know. Um, and then, um, you know, as like two, three weeks went on and I was like, okay, like, I think like, it doesn't look like it's going to affect us too bad. And also like, just don't be stupid while we're figuring out this next phase. So it was like, you know, yeah, if we went to the store, like before I, touched my face or ate food i washed my hands you know like be smart about it and then you know like there's just so many people that can't do the critical thinking um and it was like well let's just see like is this affecting if it's affecting kids very se severely then like it will become evident because there's nothing in the media the the disgusting parasite that the mainstream media is there's nothing more they love than misery so like if it was negatively affecting children at all. You know, it would be plastered all over the new, like dying children, yeah. but they, that's how little it affected them is they could never actually even, they could never even push that.
No. And um, when they tried to bring up a dead kid, it would you'd find out that he had like stage three cancer and was 400 pounds. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. No, healthy kids did not get sick or die from this. Yeah. And like in and at the same time, like there's the people that are like, oh, but, you know, like, don't worry about COVID at all. And I'm like, well, like, you know, there are like immunocompromised people that like have that are old, like elderly people with serious health issues that if if they get a cold, it is going to be bad for them. So like they like, let's let's be smart about this. And like even like in my own, you know, personal life, I mean, like my mother in law has been on and off with uh, chemo the whole time and like chemo just absolutely wrecks your immune system, Mm -hmm. you know? So like we were very careful, like we don't care about COVID for us. Like we're not like I've had like the hat trick of it. Like I've had it three times, you know, and and it each time it gets even easier. Um, And, uh, and uh, yeah. So, but like we're, we're super careful if we're, if we have a sniffle of like a regular, like, we're not thinking, oh, it might be COVID. We're thinking, like, you could have a cold. We don't want to give that to grandma because grandma is on a medicine that's making her, you know, immune system down, like go down. So, like, we we can't we can't let grandma get a cold. Um, and that's just common sense. Like, it would have been the right. same thing pre-COVID. Like, it would, you know, we we literally did the same thing. My parents went through chemo pre-COVID. And we did the same thing through the winter. It was like, well, if, like you got a runny nose, we probably shouldn't be around like Pap Pap right now because you know. He just got blasted with all this stuff that's going to make him sick. Right. But COVID didn't change that. That's normal yeah. behavior. That's just human life. Like that's that's called being a human being and yeah. making conscious, smart decisions. But the problem that we've seen, and sorry to go off on this tangent, but like the problem <laughs> we're seeing is that a lot of people don't make decisions for themselves. And they, I think they actually aren't capable of it. Yeah. This was uh, Maj Ture, I think, tweeted out something that was pretty sharp a couple of weeks ago. He's like, people aren't following the science. They're following the TV. And it's that that's literally what yep. people do. It's they say they're following the science, but it's the doctor that the TV and the, the you know government picked out for you to follow. It's not actually doing science. Oh, yeah. I mean, think about like, you know, we're about the same age. Think about how we grew up. I remember, you know, I mean, there was cable came along like when I was like four. Um, but like, you know, they're even then like when cable existed like it was still there was channels two four and eleven you know there was the cbs affiliate the abc affiliate and the nbc affiliate um and you watched one of those channels um and you know like this is what they told me so that is what i'll think you know and like it was it was so centralized and they had so much control over the narrative that um and they even like made you think that if you were watching a different channel you were getting a different opinion but it really was just molding you in the same direction um you know so like every night you know like my my dad would come home from work we'd eat dinner then we'd go down we'd be playing and he'd turn on like you know the nightly news with peter jennings you know and and uh and then after that you know the tv programming would start and they use the word programming for a reason (laughs) because you are being programmed um so it is you know it is weird like that this you know people i'm like do you think that they were going to go like quietly like they had such a comfortable control over the narrative and all of a sudden like you know that was like early 90s to you know now you know in the span of 30 years it has just vastly changed and they've lost that control so right. like even though we are fighting a bunch of censorship we're actually we have more freedom of speech now because we used to not even be able to like share opinions with anybody other than our neighbor. Um, the, you know, I, I firmly believe that if they knew what the internet was going to turn into, they would have never created it. Um, <laughs> That's a hundred percent true. They are terrified of the internet. It is ruining the government. Like, no, we have never had this level of awareness, even though most people are still blue pilled for lack of a better term and sleepwalking through life, listening to the official outlets. There's more people than ever that have kind of woken up and seen like, oh, it's the world is not the way they're telling me. And more people agree with me than I ever would have imagined. And we're finally starting to see that thanks to the internet. Oh yeah, if it weren't for the internet, I would have never thought that people thought the way I did. Yeah, it's. I thought I was a lunatic and I still am a lunatic, but it's just, yeah. I know, now I know there's a bunch of crazies out there with me. So yeah. I actually want to bring it back to Movies Plus. I, I'm curious about how you make content decisions because you've kind of teased you have some uh, interesting upcoming things, but you know, you have this free speech absolutism, which, you know, I'm a full supporter of, but there's also 
I'm sure there's content you don't want on your platform. Like you are making some editorial type decisions in there, right? So how are you kind of vetting material? What are, is there a specific focus that you're looking for or how do you make um, those decisions? I mean, like we definitely, you know, like avoid anything lewd, you know what I mean? Like, I, like obvious, like we're not like, you know, some evangelical Christian platform that only has like, you know, like the fluffiest Kirk Cameron piece on it, you know, or something like right. that. Like we, um, you know, we have all kinds of content, but yeah, we're just like avoiding lewdness, um, you know, but it, but it does have to have a, um, like we're looking for content that it has to be of certain quality, you know, like we, there's people that make movies that are just are not very good, you know, sure. and um, it has nothing to do with the message. It has to do with the fact that it's just not a good movie um, right now, you know, like we're, our customer base is very focused on freedom of speech. So, you know, that's, that's who we're feeding at the moment. You know, I tell people on the left, I'm like, look, I'm just, it looks like I'm supporting the right because they're the ones that are getting censored. But like when they, the censorship is going to come for you. And when it does, I'll still be here and I'll support you. I mean, we have like, you know, we had the Nick Fuentes doc and it was between a, like on the platform at one point I op opened up the app and it was sandwiched between um, a, a movie called church and state. There's a documentary about the gay rights, mo uh, marriage rights, fight in um in utah against the mormon church and then on the right it was a uh, modern day slavery which is about uh the over incarceration incarceration of african americans in the in the united states and so i was like i mean we're not like pushing a narrative like we're we're sharing it all um but uh but yeah i mean editorially like right now you know stuff that gets the focus for example uh alex's war about alex jones um okay. uh, made uh, the movie came out I think in August. Um, uh, but we, you know, it was like on iTunes and everything. We just released it two days ago. Um, and it's, you know, available for subscribers, uh, you know, just shows what Alex Jones has gone through. Um, uh, you know, and, and so like it's, that's, that's a very makes sense. Uh, you know, it, it, we go, we go with that. And then we're looking at stuff too, like our next, one of our next movies plus originals that's coming out, is called um it's called the dividers and it's about uh do you remember when uh when uh what's his name shia labeouf uh said he will not divide us and he tweeted like twenty thousand times in a row after trump got inaugurated he will not divide us he will not divide us um then he did this art installation where like he just stood there every day and was like in front of a camera like he will not divide us he will not divide us and then the internet being the internet started trolling him and then it became like a capture the flag game because he had the flag with, you know, like oh. a camera angle looking up at the flag that said he will not divide us so that nobody could find out where it was and they couldn't troll him. But then they saw planes going in the background. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Like, Reddit is undefeated in finding people like it was amazing. They found him in like the Nevada desert. They found him everywhere. They triangulated the location based on the flight paths that they saw in the sky and then a guy was like, I live close to there. And he like drives around honking his horn, asking everyone to listen. And then they could hear him. And I mean, he, like found the flag. And it's so this is all in that documentary. And it's done like in a a fun, like a, like a fire fest type, like, you know, obscure. I mean, it's so good. It's such it's such a good movie that, uh, you know, I'm blown away that that it's an original for us. And because you know, I showed my wife. She's like, "Wow!" Like, I mean, everything I've shown her that's an original to us. She's like, "These are like, you know, this is something that Netflix would kill to have, you know." And and we're just lucky that we're working with good partners. Um, then we have one um, that I I can't uh, officially. I mean, we're literally we're just signing the contract in the next couple of days. But uh, it's about um, it's about uh, George Floyd um, documentary, and uh, it's a an African American woman who made it. Um, and she's been like blacklisted in Hollywood, uh, and uh, and so she's looking for an outlet like us. I think she wants to release it on Martin Luther King Day, so it'll be coming out, you know, a couple weeks into January. I forget what day that is, but um, so there's that, uh, you know, and we're not just looking for that type of specific content. There's also the Steel with Ali Alexander that'll be coming out, um, 
you know, which is like follows his like stop the steal movement after the election, um, which to me, because like I'm not a Trump supporter, but like I find it very interesting. And I think it's a really interesting story. So like I want to follow that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think the audience will like it. So there's editorial decisions that in that direction that like, you know, it keeps popping up, you know, like uh, I don't know if, if somebody came to us like that was with Kanye and they were like, hey, we have a documentary of like what's going on with him right now. I'd watch be that. Like, <laughs> they'd be like, all right, let's do it. You know, um, like I know for a fact because like the Nick, <laughs> the Nick Fuentes doc is on our platform and Nick's with Kanye. Like I know I've been told that Kanye's watched it. So like, I'm like, well, like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Like, you know, do I think he's like uh, going through an, an event right now? Yes. Um, does he always articulate his points? Well, not at all. Um, but, you know, it's just the it's just the nature of the beast. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the editorial. But like, I don't care if you come. I would like to have the opposing views my goal in the future would be to have if it's something divisive i'd love to have a documentary from both sides and like tie them together like sitting next to each other like make it a series where it's like you know left versus right you know or like you know like the like maybe we call it the polar polarizing you know polar opposite series and just always have the rebutting content you know from here's their view now here's their view make up your own mind because you are a grown-up so you, know? you would do you would have like the the biopic of noam chomsky and the biopic of like milton friedman <laughs> next to oh each yeah other. yeah yeah because because i believe that ha having those two right next to each other people would be like okay i see who's right <laughs> you know like the th that's the reason that they don't like to have differing opinions out there is that they are afraid of how smart the average person is don't get me wrong the average person can be pretty dumb <laughs> in a lot of aspects but like you know, if you really let people free their minds and, and like be exposed to multiple views, you know, it's going to change. I mean, so like I mentioned, I'm, you know, uh, a man of faith and stuff. And I'm a I'm a member of the Catholic Church. Um, I'm a devout Catholic, but I do not like unilaterally agree with everything. I'm not a big fan of Pope Francis. Um, and, you know, like. I look at like stuff where I'm like, oh, you know, but like basically in my mind, this is as close to what I think, you know, Jesus wanted it to be. But if he came down and like saw what we did, like if he if he fast forwarded like right before he got crucified and saw what the church came, he'd be like, guys, like, I mean, you're still getting like the main message, but like, holy crap, have you like messed this up? <laughs> like, this is so far away from what I really wanted it to be. Like, do we need this Vatican City with all this gold and all this money and artwork? and everything protected behind walls and or, or do you or should we maybe serve the poor you know like <laughs> like that was kind of his message it was like you know clothe the naked you know feed the hungry um uh you know i i can't imagine you know uh jesus ever being in a position where he was like yeah this like huge vatican's like this is a great idea like that's what we should use our money for so and then like you know there's so many moments throughout the, the history of the Catholic Church that have been corrupt. So it's just yeah, I don't know I even know how I got down that road, but like, you know, you can't you have to think for yourself. And, you know, so like, you know, I think my parents are kind of like afraid of me questioning that stuff, you know, because like they wanted me to like remain in the religion. Um but in my mind I was like I remember thinking I made a conscious decision in my like college years. I was like, look I'm not going to just do this because that's what mom and dad did. Um, it's got to be my own thing. And, you know, like I pushed the limits, like I pushed, like I explored as I'm a big researcher. I like to read up on stuff, how things happen, um, you know, and ultimately I came back to like, yeah, like this is like the, I think the closest to what it really is. And so the reason I tell that story is not to push people to like, go oh, become Catholic. I'm just saying like, <laughs> I think that that is what people need to do in life when they're making yeah. decisions about things and how they should feel about things is they need to be exposed to both and like kind of walk the path, you know, and like find out like, Oh, you know, there's a reason kids don't touch the stove a second time after they get <laughs> burned, you know? So like, they don't know that until they do it. 
um, you know, you as a parent, you want to guide them as best you can. But like ultimately kids are going to make their own decisions. People, humans are going to make their own decision in general. And, and the government should get out of the way and let them do it. Let them explore. Let them figure it out on their own. And and then, you know, ultimately cooler heads will prevail and they will, you know, I think see the light. So that's why I want to offer both. I think, you know, if somebody was looking at Noam Chomsky versus, you know, Milton Friedman, they might think, oh, you know, hey, that was like sympathetic towards his view. I might go that way a little bit. But then like over time, because the information's in their head, they're really, wait, no, this this is right. Like this this works better, you know uh that's same thing with like you know the the war on nuclear energy versus you know uh you know coal powered energy these electric car bull crap where like they people think they're being environmentally friendly because they don't see the coal plant burning all the electricity right. to make the electricity it's like if people have the information eventually they'll understand what the truth is and and um and people gravitate towards truth and so that's why i i figured it was a good business plan to to pitch you know, telling the truth and uh, and being a place where people can can find the truth and people will always gravitate towards that. I was slightly amused at your uh, amused at your. So your whole Catholic story where you realize the whole Protestant Reformation was like, oh, we don't need this big corrupt organization. You should just read the Bible and have a personal relationship with God. So you're, you're sounding like a Protestant Catholic there. Uh, but I agree with the, the general message is like, yes, people do need all the information to be able to decide for themselves. Like, the, you know, in, in the religious sense, God gave us autonomy and free will to be able to make these decisions. And mm -hmm. that means you have to assume he gave us the capability of making those decisions for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, always, I, there's nothing more I hate than the phrase, everything happens for a reason. Because I'm like, no, like it was very specific. God gave us free will. So if everything happens for a reason, and everything is predetermined in life, then that means we're just slaves to his vision. And like, so no, like we, this is not all like pre-planned. You can't just sit here and be an NPC and let your life, you know, unfold in front of you. You have to take action. Couldn't he leave you messages? You know, can he nudge you in directions? Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta like pay attention and, and listen. And, and yeah, like that's, that's, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, the, the whole centralized part of it is like where I really have problems with it. I mean, to me, I'm like, you know, it's like the, the body, I'm, uh, not to get all preachy, but like, it's really the body and blood of Christ it's like, I believe that's a real thing. And, um, and then, you know, but like all the layers of bureaucracy on top of it, just it, every layer just drives me more nuts and more nuts. Cause I'm like, you, you do realize people that like Lutherans started because people were corruptly paying priests to get rid of their sins. Like, <laughs> right. that's why, like, so no, this isn't perfect, you know? Um, and, you know, obviously there's been plenty of scandals in the Catholic Church, so there's still a ton of work to be done. But also every other church, guess what? You all have the same scandals. It's just, it's, you yeah. know, it's everywhere. It's, you know, if anywhere you can't, that's why I love Bitcoin. You can't trust, you got to verify. Don't trust, verify. And you got to do that in every aspect of life. You know, you don't just blindly trust an organization that they have your best intentions and maybe that's what trip has tripped up libertarians so much because they don't trust they verify so like you know they're not just like uniformly getting behind you know everybody but i i don't know I, but i think i think we're in an interesting spot now to get into like to back to the libertarian i think you know i think there's a chance here there's a lot of people like me and there's even more people that are less libertarian minded than me but like are just kind of disenchanted like they're not radical left they're not radical right and they're just like what the hell is going on yeah i've seen a lot of people wake up you know it's not the numbers aren't big enough yet but the more we have these messages out there the more these podcasts and these movie platforms come out that allow people to kind of see the entire spectrum of the ideas that are out there i think people will gravitate towards the ideas that give them the most freedom in their life because i think genuinely there's two two concerns in life and that's safety and freedom and they're kind of counterbalancing but we've overdone the safety thing way too much. And I think people are really ready to swing back towards the freedom side. So I do think your, uh, your platform is going to succeed. Uh, we got to stick with it. And so everybody listening, um, you know, I joined, it's pretty cheap and actually, uh, you know, I'm going to put this out a little bit early. I'll, I think I'll put it out Wednesday next week. Um, 
you know, we're recording on a Thursday right now. So people have time for last minute Christmas presents. If they, uh, if they can, can you give gifts of memberships, uh, of subscriptions? Yeah, you can, yeah, you can gift subscriptions. Um, you can get a whole year for 30 bucks. Um, and if they use promo code Corey, uh, it's just C O R Y. It will knock the price down to 24 bucks. So it's two bucks a month. Um, and, and you can, uh, you know, do that before Christmas. And, uh, but like, yeah, I mean, it's just to us, like, you know, you can gift it to people, you can, um, you can share it, uh, and, and then also get it for yourself so that, you know, the, you have a place where the information is not getting, you know, you're getting, you're getting spoken to and, and, um, instead of talked down to, and you'll, you have a place where, you know, that there will be a voice, there will be a place where like, cause think about it this way, like everybody that's listening, if you see like the idea of a movie where you're like, for example, Q sent me, you know, like as soon as I heard about it, I was like, Oh my God, how is this not like, I can't wait to watch this. And then I realized, Oh no, it's, it's getting censored. Like Netflix said they were offended that it was pitched to them. <laughs> like they wanted Jacob Chansley to be like portrayed as the Q shot, like as the uh, Osama bin Laden of Jan six. And like in don't get me wrong this doesn't make Jacob Chansley look great like he looks very naive and yeah. like you know you're like oh god dude oh dude like what are you doing why did you walk in that building why are you calling the FBI like you know it's like <laughs> it's just kind of like you feel really bad for him um and uh but it's a very but, human story it's a yeah. it's a person that's trying to figure things out and clearly has some misconceptions about how the world is operating yeah, but it, it's, exactly. It's a it's it's a very cool story in that way. It's like, how can naivety go wrong? How can your ignorance take you into bad places? Yeah. And, you know, he's in jail because he didn't have any idea of the potential consequences of what he was yeah, doing. Exactly. And, you know, it, it, but like that's like, you know, I, I, like I was telling people, you know, if you if you want to support it, like you if I didn't own if I didn't own movies plus and I, I saw that and I would have been like, oh, my God, I wish there was a platform that would give this a space like there was nowhere for it to go it it was gonna just like die on the vine so it's like that that's the danger and and so that's what you're doing if you're signing up for movies plus is you're 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 opening the door so that like every time you see something you're like oh my god this might get censored like send it to me like my dms are open just send it to me that's how we've got that's how we've gotten a lot of the content that we've worked with is that like people are like, hey, you should check this out because it's not going to make it on any of the major platforms, not because it's not a good movie, but because of the message it's pushing, um, you know, so like that's what we're here for. And and so if you sign up and and uh, and, you know, you, you could just you could be our scout team, you know, send me stuff, send me what you think. Like, hey, I'm afraid this uh, this is going to get banned. Um, I mean, my ears perk up the moment I hear something got banned. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, what's that? Like, all right, let's uh, let's take a look at it, you know. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's the the pitch for Movies Plus, and and you know, like I said, even you know, you can share it, you can buy people memberships, gift subscriptions, but uh, if you want to, if you want to sp uh, spread the word and let people know, I mean, we're available on all the major, you know, uh, the apps are available everywhere. Uh, the only thing that isn't available at the moment is a like on uh, Samsung TVs, but that'll be available in like a couple weeks so like we're actually it's being built as we speak uh it's just the process we're waiting samsung is doing their review um but every other app on your phone smart tv roku you name it it's there uh and and you can share it with people we also have live tv on there um we have a live christmas tv uh channel playing right now uh with a bunch of christmas movies on loop we have comic relief which is a bunch of comedy stand-up comedy on loop uh and and those are free so like if you want to give people a taste be like hey if you're at somebody's house during the holidays you know say like hey download this app look you can watch you know stand-up comedy whenever you want um and you know yeah well we don't have a ton of ads in there but like it is the free part so you know the idea is for you to see it we're giving you something to to taste it and go you know this this is worth it worth it i'm gonna sign up um, and there'll be more of those channels coming out as we go. Yeah. Obviously, Christmas will be stopping, you know, uh, <laughs> eventually. But um, but yeah, you know, that's 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 what we're pitching and that's what we're providing. You know, you're going to see stuff. I mean, if you're listening to a libertarian podcast, you're definitely seeing stuff all the time. You're like, oh, this isn't going to see the light of day. And, and we're here for that.
Yeah. And so send him, I'll, I'll put your uh, Twitter handle in the show notes here. Um, you know, if you sign up, you're funding the future content too. So, uh, you know, exactly. Gift exactly. as many, gift as many as you want, sign up. Like this is, this is an important fight and it, for a couple bucks a month. I mean, it's a no brainer. There's good content on there. Uh, you know, <laughs> how many times do you go on Netflix and you can't find anything to watch anyway. And that's one of the big, actually one of the big angles for us is to like, uh, we're working on, I had, a, I had feedback. Somebody emailed me after I was on Tom's show and it was like some of the best feedback and it really fit into like some of the stuff we're looking to do. So it's like, we're trying to make it even easier to, for you to find the content that fits for you. Um, Cause that's the, the thing I don't like that Netflix and all the other places do is they, they do it based off of your viewership and which is fine, but they're like tailoring it towards what you, what they want you to watch. Um, whereas like I was, I'm starting to look at the design of the app and the layout and I'm like, all right, how do we make it so that like, okay, I go on, what do I want to watch? You know, like what, what is my flavor? Okay. My, I get the, I get to choose my flavor of choice right off the bat. And now I'm looking at all that content. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of, uh, where we're the angle we're going with it. Um, and uh, and just on the design side, you know, way we're ways we're trying to do it. And like I said, people, your feedback means the world to us. Your support means the world to us, because I, I can say this confidently: like Bitcoiners and Libertarians are the two main supporters of this platform. If it weren't for them, this platform would be dead. And you guys have carried us to this point. You guys can help us get to the next point. I mean, we're we're going to be live streaming the Bitcoin conference in uh in a couple months um and you know i have a pretty much every bitcoin documentary on there um but uh you know we're obviously getting a lot of liberty minded content um and uh and yeah it's just it's amazing i can see the proof is in the pudding you know like the subscriber numbers it's hard to tell like oh you know so and so subscriber what do they support but i can look and see okay what are the most viewed videos on the platform and it's it's Bitcoin and freedom, you know, people really like those things. So, so I know that it's you guys that are carrying us. And and so if you are already a subscriber, I greatly appreciate it. And, um, and, you know, honestly, like if you want to work in a platform, like this is like in, in the future, as we grow, like I want to bring people on that are like-minded, liberty-minded, because if you're liberty-minded, you're not going to shut out other people's opinions. And so, you know, Look at it that way too. You're helping us grow because I don't want to be man. The amount of stuff that I have to manage on a day to day basis is a nightmare, and it's just because I'm an entrepreneur. And if you're an entrepreneur, you get it. Um, but like, I dream of the day where I'm just working on big picture stuff, and you know what that means. I mean, I have some, you know, Bitcoiners and uh, the Bitcoiners mainly that have reached out for over a year now, been like, "Hey, as soon as you can hire, let me know." And they work at like different streaming platforms. But yeah. they want to come to the place that's friendly to them. And, um, you know, I'm like, we, we just have to keep the ship tight right now and, you know, focus on content for growth and advertising. Um, but, yeah, once we get to the point that we're we're operating on a, on a bigger scale, you know, if you're a, li a I'd be loving to bring on as many libertarians as possible. All right, folks, you heard him. Go sign up. If you have content out there, if you're seeing it, send it to him and let's help him grow. Corey, thanks so much for coming on today. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Go Pitt. All right, that's the last episode for the year. I just want to take a sec to thank everyone who's been tuning in and listening to me ramble every week. You know, I did 35 episodes in 2022. I'm still kind of learning and figuring out the best ways to present this show, and I'm very grateful that you're, you know, here for the adventure. So I have some big things planned for 2023, and the show's only going to get better. So thanks again, and I you know, wish you a very happy and successful new year. Until next time, stay free.